Recording. Cross. Recording. Okay. And action. Action. <laughs> oh, this is chair in the way. So let's get to try All right. We kind of watched through this. Um, just kind of touch on the psychology behind the design. Uh, okay, definition of design verb to create, fashion, execute, or construct according to plan. First, you should learn the basics, then practice a lot. Until you get to the point where you're good enough to break the rules, then do that. Okay. Uh, so what do I mean by that is all the stuff that I'm showing you on the face shape, oh, this is the perfect brow, and this is the perfect lip, this is the oval, those are basic, your baseline, your baseline of beauty makeup. Whenever you start drawing out of the lines, just like you did when you're little, when you're coloring, you know, whenever you go out of the boundaries of what I've taught you guys, and what is a perfect brow, what is a perfect, that starts to become a little more fantasy. It starts becoming a little bit more high fashion. It starts, the look starts to change. You guys follow? So what happens when I see when I'm teaching makeup for people, they're afraid to go past this line. And then when I move, when we transfer from beauty and we kick it into high fashion, all their looks are just like within the safety zone that I told them. I walk up there, girl, take the brow down to here. <laughs> you know, or you know, put the lips, you know, Sky's the limit. When you're creating something that is fantasy, um, and we'll talk about these terms because it's really, I think it's important that you guys understand the terms. Um, uh, okay, all the basics of fashion evolve from the past, okay? And that's why I was saying it's really important. I'm gonna try to teach you guys a lot of the time periods and everything stems from there. Study the history of fashion, why fashion repeats itself, okay? Can you see the different generations creating the same look, but it's in their own little style, right? Okay. Oh, this is what I do for my, this is something I did for the <laughs> Cosmo class, but this is going to be you guys when you finish up your <laughs> escort program. And then hopefully this is going to be all you guys, right? <laughs> okay. Then, it's not a salon, it'll be wherever it be, salon if you're going to work, do a makeup, whatever it is. This was for Cosmo, but I should have put beds there. You guys are going to be facialists, okay? So, you're going to walk in and then, um, <laughs> after, well, not 1600, that should be 600. Like I said, this is something I did for the Cosmo class. Uh, after practicing 600 hours of here in school, doing facials and analyzing the skin and blah, 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 you get your first client in your bed and this is what you look like, right? So that's normal, okay? I have no idea what to do. That's what you feel like, right? So this is what I tell them. Knowing the psychology behind the design is asking the right questions. It really is like the, what we talk about in here. So. Whatever you do in the um, uh, skincare is the same thing you do in anything in the beauty field. Okay. So um, this is what my acronym is what I call the scene. First one is part of your question is understanding, and sometimes it's not uh, your question, but just understanding their socioeconomic background, understanding their culture, their environment, the kind of environment they they were raised in, because that kind of represents who they are now. And the other things that you need to know is what are their needs. Okay, these are things that you are thinking quick because they get in your chair and you're like, ugh. Okay, I gotta think quick. Um, expressions, uh, how they express themselves. You know, I'm all going into the book. Okay, socioeconomics kind of covers about their health, their career, their education, and their income. Okay, how does how does that go into play when you're designing a makeup? Well, those are kind of little key things that we'll, we'll understand. Well, where where you're looking for their safety zone. Right? You're, you're you know where where are they okay with? Help. You know, do they you need to know do they have allergies, sensitivities, what kind of medications are up? How does that apply to makeup? Yeah, sometimes people who are heavily medicated are very sensitive to skin. So it's the same as when you're when you're doing skincare, you need to know these things. You need to know the integrity of their skin. Career. There are so many walks of life of what we do, okay? So you kind of know, like most of your most of the nurses and doctors I know, they're not coming to work full face. I do know some that they put a little bit of makeup most of the time they're not. So every day they're used to seeing themselves like they are. Um, they might go out, you know, at night. Another important thing I understand is their culture. Religion, past down, their past down beliefs. Uh, remember we talked about, uh, I know in my culture, about being fair. You know, so people want to be like, you know, it's like, and but their body is like darker than dark, but their face is like, okay. That's a past down belief. Could be from their mother or what have you, or the culture. Um, and sometimes culture just doing what they know, you know, what their mom did, you know, what, what they were around. Uh, traditions is another thing you need to understand, you know, kind of knowing where their culture background is. Um, I tell my makeup artists, you need to research all the different types of weddings out there. If you guys are going to be doing weddings, make sure you understand culture. You know, you might have this client and you need to know how their weddings take place. Some of them last, you know, some of these weddings are like seven 
days or something like that. It goes on. It's not like one day like we do here. Okay? So understand their looks. Understand that the things that they're wearing because you as a makeup artist are needing to design a look to fit in within their culture. And I know, I know, are we, any Armenians in here? I always thought you were Armenian. No Armenians? Anyone has Armenian friends? If you ever talk to them, I have friends who said that they would get so scolded if they didn't walk out of the house. They need to be proper hair, makeup, everything needs to be done. Their mom, they would get a whipping if, if they weren't presentable. That's just their culture and the women need to be looking their best all the time. So understand their psychology when you're doing their makeup. You know, you can't just do something, most likely they're gonna be a little bit of higher end in the look that you're gonna design for them. Um, but you also need to understand they might come from that culture, but they've adopted a different culture. I came here as a, you know, a Filipina and I adopted American culture. So you know, I, I am more American than I am a Filipina, so understand that too. Indian brides, okay? This is kind of what they do. Bright colors. A lot of this culture wants vibrant colors. And, you know, and, it, and it represents a lot of reds and orange and purples because those all represent royalty. And it's, it's, it's this mentality of, of certain colors represent royalty and, and a certain uh, category and, 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 and um, uh, eliteness. Huh? Oh, we said bless you. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, here's your African bride. You know, so understand that, again, their dresses aren't going to look like ours all the time. Okay, so design and look for that. Another thing that's important to know is the environment that they're they're around. Okay, the city, state, country in which they live in, uh, the area in which they work. They they, they can adopt a certain environment of, of based on where they work. Um, the people that they're around most of the time. You know how they say that you are who you hang out with. You know, in fact, my day I wasn't a tool of but I kind of hung out and looked out like like one, so I picked it up. So that was my style. Okay, um, and he's with tight clothes and. Uh, here, environment. Here's an example of an environment. You know, if you were these women, they have to keep up that environment. That they live in that environment. They have to keep up that style. Um, Renee, she's, this is my this is my friend. We're, we're really close. Do you guys talk about us? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, she's she's hilarious. But um, anyway, uh, she always has to keep up this persona of being a mom's daughter. You know, tough all the time. Don't show your feelings. Da da da. So, you know, you have to, as an artist working on these people, you've got to know how to uh, uh, kind of uh, scale yourself to adapt, to adapt to them, you know. Because sometimes, if, 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 if you can't handle people cussing all that stuff, yes, you might have to uh, either toughen up or uh, find something else to do or not work on certain high, high profile. Because you can't get your feelings hurt easy. These ladies, we, well, they'll say one thing and you probably, if your feelings get hurt, you probably never want to pick up a makeup brush again. So you have to learn that that's just who they are. There is a person behind that toughness and there's a reason why. So I've learned that with Renee because, like I said, she kind of bowed down a little bit. But anyways, um, you're so the country girl, okay? You know, if you kind of know a little bit about them, that they're listening to country music, they might kind of follow what they listen to, right? So, you know, like again, you, you don't want to put people in categories, but as an artist, you have, you have to kind of know what is their, their safety zone, where, where are they coming from, who am I working, there's a person behind that face that you're going to work on, right? <laughs> and you can't think, um, <clears throat> I have a makeup artist friend that, like I said, everybody looks the same, everybody, everybody looks the same, same look. She's got a beautiful personality and people just keep going to her and stuff like that, but um, you know, it's going to take one person that not like that look, but okay. So you need to know the de design from all walks of what basically has to Okay, <clears throat> this is what you guys most commonly you see. You're going to see the glam look, you're going to see the cut crease, you're going to see the smoky eyes. Know these terms because this is something that I think is on your list. Let's see. Um, yes, I think on your, your makeup uh, application final, is uh, she wants uh, one eye to do uh, classic. We'll go over that. And then the other eye, um, smoke to okay? And it's funny because smoky can be almost, you can do a downplay of smoky, and there's so many different variations of this, okay? All right, there's a road. <laughs> Rubber meets a road is when you master knowing what to do versus what not to do. And that's why I said that learning all these different makeup looks is one thing, but knowing how to tweak it to, to adapt to the place you're working at is the master behind, okay? Do's and don'ts, okay? What's going on here? What kind of lid does she have? 
monolith? Good. Someone say monolith or monolith? Yeah, well, it's, it, it's a little bit of both, right? Again, there's no, just, just understand it's in that ballpark. Okay, I don't want you guys uh, thinking too much. Yeah, definitely you see some skin hanging over there, but you also see flat. So it represents that monolith, and it also kind of represents a hooded lid. So remember I talked about the, the power of your contour and highlight. What does highlight do? And it flattens it, right? What does contour do here? Push it in. Push pull. Okay, you contour, right? Do you guys see that? So where you put a darker shade is gonna give an illusion that's getting pushed in. So look at this, okay? It, 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 and it's, it's going way below, so it's gonna drag the eye to go down, okay? Is it wrong or right? If she likes that look, I see some look like this, you know? And for them, it, what do they call the evil look sometimes? <laughs> so there is really no right or wrong to make up if it matches what you're playing. If she said, "Can you make my eyes look, you know, more fuller?" And that's when it starts will go wrong with her because you didn't make it more fuller or whatever. Okay, so that's a do and go. So start looking at paying attention to the high, the highlight and contour that are being placed here. Okay, so knees. So another thing that you need to know. This is um, we're talking about the psychology behind the person you're going to do your makeup. You need to know their needs and uh, versus their wants, their likes and their dislikes. Uh, okay, needs and their wants. All right. So obviously, if I uh, um, you know, I, I, I don't have that nose that I want, you know. I can only give an illusion so much. Now, the thing that you'll come across is when people have, like, breakouts. They say, oh, can you get rid of this? It, it is protruding, okay? And depending on where it's at, you can only do so much. So, for example, if it's protruding up here, would I want to put a contour just right over there? No. So, the thing that you have to understand is that, um, or what you need to do is, take the focus off of that. Whether it be a bold, strong red lip, or the eyes will be, you know, the eyes will carry the look, uh, and then just give an illusion. It just depends on where those protruding things are happening. You can only, uh, um, you know, conceal it so much. When they turn sideways, you're gonna see that bump, you know, right? So don't feel like, you know, don't think you're gonna put more, you know, more is better, that you're gonna slam a whole bunch of, it really is just softening out the, you know, when we're talking about a bump, I've worked on something before, um, let me see, where it's a, so if the bump is here, so I'm definitely not gonna highlight it, but I might wanna flatten it out, just a slight, slight darkness, depending on where it is, just on the edges. And as we do faces up, uh, if I can come across one, I'll show you. All right, their likes and their dislikes, uh, what will um, what will complement them uh, and practical or more involved kind of look. Uh, okay, what I mean by that uh, practical more involved is um, if they're coming to if you guys are giving lessons um, to the area for a counter, what keeps your customer coming back if you guys educate them? Don't just put makeup on them. Talk to them. Say, so, you know what? I, I notice that you wear uh, your eyeliner below your your waterline, and um, you know you've got really big full eyes. I go if you want to balance that out. How about we line your waterline? You know, say just so you you want to give them looks that they can do on their own. Um, like when it comes to hair styling, like I'm not going to want to cut or color their uh, hair or style it in a way where it's too much maintenance for them. So if you're going to educate them in makeup or even in skincare, make sure it's practical to them. Don't if they're really busy and they tell you they don't have time to do their face, don't try to sell them a whole system where it's like 15 steps. You know, start with baby steps. So that's what that means by practical or more mode. Okay, here's is um, okay, corrective makeup or back for fashion. So the one in the left and the one in the right. Okay, so the hooded eyes told you. So what's wrong with the X on the hooded eyes versus I mean it doesn't look bad, right? This one the hooded eyes? Yeah, I mean if it's by itself does it look bad? No, right? It doesn't. So if it's by itself, it doesn't look bad. But if you are trying to, because it's something, you know we all are picky about our own face. And to me, I'm like, oh, they're both beautiful, right? But you're always going to have the client who's like, oh, no, I want, you know, she, she doesn't like, she wants it to be, uh, not, she doesn't want this hooded to be shown. She, she has insecurity about that. So if you're putting any kind of lights in there, you're just accentuating her hoodedness that she really told you she don't like. Well, Okay, so here, you know, okay, so I'm just, I'm just going to pull up, pull up a little darker color and 
that's a mid-tone, right? That's a mid-tone. Do you see that? Or this is a darker tone? So you're gradually, you're gradually going to push it back so she has a little more depth in her eyes. Okay? And then, and then what do they do? They, they lessen the lash. The lash is not so full. There's different effects to, to cause that look to happen. Because if, if this was like over here really, really deep and, and, and thick right here, it, it will take away what you're doing back there. It'll cover that, the detail you did. Okay, over here. Yes and no. Why?
you see that. You always see, oh, there's a mirror, da da da. Now when you're doing hair, it's different. In the hair, you need to you need to make sure that you're balanced. You need to see that. But when they do makeup, I flip them around. Okay. <laughs> expression. Your final masterpiece represents their expressions without words, representing who they are and how they want to feel. So your look is gonna represent their expressions. So the look that you design for them. So understanding their body language, finding their confidence and insecurities. These are things you're a psychologist now. You're reading their body language, how they walk in. Um, you're clarifying their request. You always want to say, okay, let me see what, you know, you, uh, I'm getting this right. You want this fix and blah, blah, blah. Clarifying their, uh, their pictures. Their pictures. This is what I was telling you guys before. As an artist, a lot of times, that's your biggest giveaway is like, oh, okay. Especially if I don't have a lot of time to go, oh, uh, is there an event that you went to and you really liked your makeup so I can get an idea? And, and they, oh, yeah, yeah. So they'll send me, oh, I really like that. And, okay, how would you feel? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's good. I go, you want, you want to try more? You want to, and they'll tell you. They'll kind of give you you know, that range. Oh, did that move on me? Uh, okay, and then able to make positive suggestions, like, you know, she's saying, you know, you, you take their features and play it up. She's gonna die. Oh, she's gonna die in the batteries? Oh, yeah. oh my God. Okay, hold on. Okay, we're gonna, uh, uh.